Hungering for something new this summer? HelloFresh has got your back. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get 12 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. Welcome to another. What was that? Uh, Gavin went mm, and then I didn't hear your hello. I heard hello. Welcome mm-hmm. to your your open was weird for me. Like it didn't Discord didn't pick it. I'm sure it sounds fine on your end. I oh. just didn't. Well, why don't well why don't you do it then? Hello and welcome to no. Episode... Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yours cut off for me as well. Yeah, the H, I got right? a hello. Yeah. yeah, it was so it sort of caught me off guard. Then Gavin hummed. Yeah, <laughs> we need to. So I need a I need a hard H in this intro or we're not going to be able to get started why don't i provide the h and andrew okay. continues got okay. it you throw okay, it ready? up i'll catch yep okay i'm going to make a little bit of sound before the h just so you definitely okay. get it i'm ready go. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> hello and welcome to episode 62 i believe of <laughs> face as always you're joined by myself man with no name jeff ramsey and gavin free hello we'll go back to back how are you two doing Oh, never been better. Never been better. <laughs> never been better. <laughs> Things are at an all time high for for your old pal Jeff. How, how about you guys? I, you know what, Jeff, you've gone through a lot of misery lately. It seems with like house stuff going wrong, all sorts of disasters. I had my own disaster that I wanted to talk about. That oh, I was yeah. excited. I was excited to talk about. It's very rare that like something horrible happens. I'm like, I can't wait to talk about this because this is one of the most absurd me problems I've encountered in a long time. We've been very cooking centric recently, and it is a cooking thing, but I tried to make ramen and like ramen's great. Love ramen. Don't have it all that often. With or without the Keurig? Without the Keurig. So that's okay. that's an important note. No Keurig because this was I typically buy and I think most people get the pre containered ramen like it's already in a thing. You pour the water into it. You heat the water up. Then you seal it. This was just ramen by itself. Like a pot noodle. Yeah, like a like a pot, like a cup of noodle style thing. This is just ramen in a bag. So just noodle, plastic bag, got your, your whatever, seasoning. Yeah, that's how I do my ramen usually. It's just the packet. You really? You do pan. the packet? That's, that's not, that's a less, it's a less common. I watched the whole thing about ramen recently. It's not as popular as the cup, cup ramen. It's way more yeah. pop. Anyway, I typically get the cup ramen. So I've had this pack ramen and I could never, and I don't know if this is just a weird in my head thing. I could never get the water boiling enough, I felt like, to like properly <laughs> heat the ramen. Like I'd always feel like I was putting in like kind of medium heat water. And it wasn't just, just doing nothing. It was just soggy ramen. Like it wasn't cooking. And I, this would drive me crazy. I, go ahead. So wait, you, so in every recipe that you've ever made, you struggle with like step one, boil the water. For ramen and, and, and the plastic, yeah. Well, because I just, I feel like I don't know how to like, I don't boil it enough, or I just, I'm bad at judging what the heat What does it look like? I don't understand that question. What do you mean, what like does it look like? If the water is rapidly bubbling. Like, how do you not understand the question? Okay, well, it's, I... You know, you get the tiny bubbles, you get the tiny bubbles. Yeah, 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 yeah I understand. As soon as, <laughs> like, the I chilling like happens. This is, why, this is why I open with, I think it's an in my head thing. I think I'm probably pouring fucking lava into the bowl when I do it, but in my head, I'm like, this isn't boily enough. I'm not doing enough. There's there no such thing as more. boiling enough. Boiling, it's boiling or it isn't. You can't have hotter than boiling. And if it's below that, it's not boiling. What it is, is I put I put it in the bowl and then I cover the bowl and I can't see what the water's doing. And in my head, <laughs> I'm convinced that I've ruined the boil and the transfer. Why are you, why are you covering it then? Well, because you're supposed to, to keep the heat in. You're supposed to keep things. I, I don't know. I'm just saying I have an irrational. I've always, I have an irrational thing when it comes to heat with ramen and the water. I feel like I'm never doing it right. The only thing that's going to affect your boiling water is your altitude. Andrew, I feel like you've been very clear that this is irrational, and I feel like Gavin keeps pointing out that it's irrational, but does this affect you in other things, or is it just in terms of boiling water for ramen? Do you have trouble boiling water for, uh, I don't know, I, well, I was going to say eggs, but you don't eat eggs, so I, no. I don't know what else you would boil so, water yeah, for. Yeah, I guess your example tea? would be maybe something like a tea, yeah, or a hot, no, not really. I don't know why, there's something about the fact that I feel like I'm supposed to be cooking this. I think there's a weird like thing in my head of like I'm undercooking the ramen somehow or I'm just ruining it. I'm not having the optimal ramen experience that I could be having. <laughs> but I only have this in a bag. This isn't an issue when it's in a cup. 
for some reason. Anyway. So you could boil it and pour it into a cup, but if you boil it and put the rum in, it's Yeah, because it's like I got an open-faced bowl, and I don't know. There's just, I'm, I've said this so many times. It's not a rational thing. It's just how my <laughs> brain is. I feel like I'm losing heat in the transfer. So I've been struggling with, like, well, how am I going to do this? And so I came up with the perfect way to make this and not have to worry about that is what if... I put the ramen in the boiling water instead of bringing the water to the ramen. I didn't have uh, I, I didn't like have a proper like pan that I could do that. I never even like occurred to me to use a pan. The pots I have are too big. I'm, I'm confused as to your process before that then. Cause that, cause isn't that what you do? You get a pan, you boil the water and then you drop the ramen. In. See, that's, that's maybe where our confusion is. I've never done that. <laughs> I've always poured the water out of the pan into the bowl. With the ramen in it. I've never put the ramen in the bowl. Oh. I've been doing it the other way. But you're supposed to boil the ramen for 30, for three minutes, right? Well, you put it in the hot water for like three minutes. It's, yeah, it's, while it boils. Yeah, but like, I guess, I don't know. I just have That's never, it never occurred to me. Ramen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mine's bubbling away and then I chuck the ramen in and then it bubbles less because the heat in the water is going into the ramen and then you still have the heat on for a few minutes. And three minutes later, you pour the sauce in and then you eat it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just that's where I was screwing up when I was doing it in in a in a package. I would move the water <laughs> to the thing because in a cup, yeah, that's you don't... dangerous as shit. You're just pouring boiling water into a bowl. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm pouring it into a bowl. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a that splash was my hazard. System. How it's are you alive? Extreme splash hazard. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to bring the ramen to the water instead. And so I, I put it in a fucking kettle. I've got this big kettle. It's like a ceramic <laughs> kettle. And it was, I'm like, this is a genius idea. What do you do with pasta? I don't really make pasta all that much. I'm not a okay. big pasta guy. I assume you wouldn't have that in the bowl. Yeah, I, I just, I feel like that's a bigger bowl item than a, a ramen thing. A ramen things are small. Uh, uh, real quick, are you saying yeah. pasta as uh, to comfort or assuage Gavin, or is that also how you say it? I never know if it's pasta or pasta. It's a Chevy Chevy Chase situation for okay. me. I never know what's right. Sometimes I say pasta. Sometimes I say pasta. Just curious. Gavin's the only person I know that says pasta. So I, I didn't know if it was maybe you and Gavin or maybe it's a Canadian British thing or you were just. I don't uh, know. Just it's like, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Much like you, Jeff, I'm trying to just please people. I don't know what they want me to say. I'll say pasta. I'll say pasta. It doesn't matter to me. I never know what's correct. I don't care either way. I was just curious as to the, the, the reasoning behind it. That's all. So I put the, the fucking ramen in the kettle and it's boiling hot. Like it is. There's smoke shooting out the end of it. I'm like, this is going to be great ramen. <laughs> so I turn, I turn <laughs> steam. I turn, I turn the heat off. I'm like, this is really hot. I'm going to turn it off. And I decide, no, I want to turn it back on. I want to keep those bubbles going. We got to keep, we got to get a good ramen cook going. I walk away for 30 seconds. I come back. All the water's shooting out of the kettle, covering <laughs> the electric stovetop. Smoke is shooting everywhere as the water, the water hits steam. It's just, it's, it's going everywhere. There's a smoke alarm that I've set off nearby. It is 1245 a.m. on a Sunday morning. And if my fire alarm goes off, everyone in the building's fire alarm goes off. <laughs> and at that hour, I'm, I feel like there's people are going to leave the building at this time because you're gonna alarms are going to get evicted. This is going to be a problem. The steam set off the, <laughs> the smoke detector? Well, no, I was scared it would because the whole fucking kitchen just got coated like I couldn't see. It was just <laughs> everywhere. It was sizzling. So it's a stove kettle. It's not an electric one. No, no, it's a, it's a stone. Yeah, it's like a, it's not an electric kettle at all. It's, it's like okay. a heavier stone one. So then you're going to see it in a minute. I panic. <laughs> I run out of the kitchen. I open up the patio door. I'm turning fans on. I am terrified that this is going to trigger the alarm. It doesn't. We're all good. I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, this is what a fucking chaotic mess this is. This is a true disaster. I'm going to I'm going to then share. So what I realized, I didn't think this plane through. It's really tough to get ramen out of a kettle. It is not designed to pour. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Go ahead. I've just missed an important part of this. Okay. The ramen is inside the kettle. Yeah, I dropped the ramen in the kettle. I was cooking it all in the kettle. How he? <laughs> I, I missed that part. I yeah, was, no, I put, I put, because all the water's boiling and I didn't have a pan, so I'm cooking everything within the kettle. What the fuck? <laughs> 
because it stays boiling. It's going to cook well. And it was a great it's idea. I pour it's the same as a pan. It's the same. It's, it's just you've, got, you've put a spout around your pan. That's what you've done. It's well, it's a deeper. I don't have any deep pans. I feel like the pans I have would not be deep enough for water to cook the ramen. <laughs> How would you cook anything? <laughs> Why do you keep saying pan? Put it in a pot. Put it the in a pot, pot. I feel like the you pot is You make cookies in a pan. You make ramen in a pot. Yeah, when I say pan, I mean like saucepan, like a, yeah, pot. That's what I mean. Okay. Well, well okay. Well, you must have those, whole... otherwise you wouldn't be able to no, cook I, anything. I have a fucking tank of one, okay? And it just seemed absurd to cook this little square thing <laughs> of ramen in a tank of a pan. How did you jam pot. it in a kettle? And it doesn't seem absurd to jam it into a tea kettle you're gonna well i didn't jam it in okay it fit perfectly fine i put the ramen in then all the water started shooting out the broth and it fucking caused the smoke steam disaster we deal with that and then we get to the part where we need to pour the ramen out of the kettle and it is not easy to do that the shape of it is inconvenient no shit. So at first, because I got so much water, this it's a big kettle. So at first, I drain. It's literally only thing designed for liquid only. Well, I it's, you can cook ramen in it too. <laughs> Confirm this. You can cook it, but can you get it out? That's the dilemma, Jeff. So I start draining the broth because there's way too much broth, and I'm like, the kettle's fucking hot. How am I going to navigate this? How am I going to move it? So my issue is, I go to pour the ramen out of the kettle, and then it goes clunk, like it clunks down. The kettle joined with the bowl. It locked into each other. They became <laughs> trapped. I could not remove the kettle from the bowl that I was trying to pour it into. And the bowl is half filled. So we're going to put this image in. What? This is exact. So you're about to see what happened. What do you mean? So I'm trying oh. to pour the noodles Wait. in to the bowl. That's not a kettle. It is. That's absolutely a kettle. How is that a kettle? Well, what what, what are does you it talking about? That's a kettle. What do you mean? It's a fancy, it's like a, it's a ceramic kettle. Uh, where's the top? <laughs> so the top pops off. So you see the metal handles on it. You yeah. fold up and that locks the top in. You can remove the top of it. Okay. It's a pan with a lid. No, a it is a, I will fucking take a photo of this kettle later, fully formed, and you will see it's a goddamn Please kettle. do. Just trust well, me. It is a fancy, case, nice goddamn kettle. I don't understand the difficulty getting it out then, because you're just getting it out like you would any pot. No, yeah. because it's okay. So it's super hard to hold, and because it's fucking hot, because it's been on an <laughs> oven forever, I have to hold the metal handle part, and it's just not easy to navigate. Plus, plus with broth, I'm putting it into a small bowl. But the real problem of this story, Gavin, <laughs> is it's now locked itself to the bowl. I cannot move either thing. I do have other mitts, Nick. There's in the fucking photo. It's still difficult to navigate. <laughs> you weren't there. This was a real problem. So is the metal bar that holds the lid on, is it gripped around the bowl? Let me show you. Like, yeah. So, so like just it pop it back. No, you fucking idiot. Yeah, just pop it back like I didn't consider that. I spent 20 goddamn minutes. You're going to call me an idiot. You're the look, one making yeah. ramen look noodles at, in a look kettle. Look at the handle, Jeff. Look at where it is. Just pop it off. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the most bizarre kettle on planet Earth, Andrew. <laughs> I cannot. I tried to lift the metal part back. It would not work. I tried to adjust it forward. It would not work. I cannot tilt the bowl because it's filled with my fucking broth. It's half filled with liquid. So I'm just stuck there. I spent hey, Gavin. 20 minutes trying to solve this. Oh, hey, Gavin. Gavin. Shit myself. Look at that. Yeah. Gavin. Yeah. Gavin, real quick, real quick. <laughs> I just like you in this moment to take one. Well, just take a beat and just realize <laughs> this is the person I aligned myself with in the condiment argument. Oh, oh, man! Against, not with. I but don't, <laughs> I don't I don't know why of all the things in your cabinets you picked this contraption <laughs> to cook ramen in. Well, it's, it was the the most viable option that was on on the top of the oven. And I went with it, and I didn't expect it to fucking lock. It was like a face hugger on a bowl. Like, I could not. There is no, there is no hope. Teach, I tried teach to Teach me how that kettle would work if there wasn't ramen in it. it I assume yeah, I would it still love gets to know. very hot. It still has the thing where you have to pour it from. Yeah. How do you get the, the stuff out? You just, you tilt, you pour it down the, the, front, the front end of it. What do you mean? Right, but. The I, spout. If you can do that, then why don't you do that with the ramen? Because there's way too much ramen to do it, and it would just fall all over the place. I had to kind of guide it into the bowl. Surely you did that with the broth. 
No, I didn't. With the broth, I got a cup and I put it in and I, I drained the broth that way until there was an adequate amount, but not too much because there was a lot of liquid in that kettle. It's a big kettle. <laughs> The real dilemma, you're fucking caught up on the wrong details. I almost burnt the kitchen down, and then I'm just trying to pour my ramen, just have a nice little evening treat, and I, it lot, it lot, I don't, I can't even speak. It latches onto the bowl. So by the looks of it, judging by the top image, there are two metal latches. Yes. Right? So did they swing up over a lid? They swing up, and then, yep. And then you would hold them both together as your yes. handle. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. That is how it right. works. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and then that weird that handle is the uh, off the side is the spout, I guess. Yes, the thing to the left that extends out that is the same that is not metal. It's the same, it's all part of the same thing. At no point with this device are you ever expected to decant out the side while it's hot. No, it is not designed for that. It's not designed for ramen. I mean, we went over this. It was just yeah. I used best thing available. And it got latched on. I didn't know what to do. I because I couldn't push it forward. I couldn't pull the handle off of it off the back because it went down and under and over. You I truly, if you're listening it. to this, and you truly need to go and find the image on a yeah. on our Instagram. We will make sure because, we have the images up because I I don't know how I would have described. It's not what you're thinking of if you're picturing a kettle. It looks. I <laughs> promise you, if you, this is not a situation where you can take what Andrew said and draw his room from it. You will not get to the kettle bowl situation that you've got in front of you standard handles <laughs> a part of the kettle is swung down and mated with the underside of the bowl <laughs> and it, it appears to be like a, a nice ceramic bowl i also like the fact that you've got yourself a drink you're like i'm in this for the long run yeah. that, what, is that butter next it's to it butter it's what's that, left that, of butter. that's just what was on the counter that is you unrelated didn't butter your to ramen? i did not butter my ramen okay yeah i had my water i was gonna just have a nice a nice what flavor evening. what flavor is this ramen uh, it's a chicken ramen jeff that's mm. a great question we're gonna pivot i don't think i've told this story but the moment it latched on reminded me to one other time in my life you know when you were like a kid I'm going to assume everyone did this and it's not just a, a weird me thing. You'd have like a cup of water on the table and you'd like try to see if you could make a seal by sucking on it and then like lift the glass off the table. Am I the only one that did this? Have any, any idea what I'm talking about? Continue. I'm just asking. That was a question. If either of you've done I've, this. I've not. I've never tried to blow a glass of water. No, not blow. You suck. It's a sucking <laughs> thing. It's not a blowing. <laughs> Why you? What's the goal of it? Well, it's just to like create, I don't know, it's like a dumb, I'm a kid, this is going to be goofy, I'm lifting a glass of water without using my hands. Like, I'll create a seal by sucking onto the top of it, it'll form around my mouth, and then I can lift the glass up. <laughs> I, th- I think I've done that. You think you've done it? I feel like I that's not that. like the craziest of kid things. But with glass? Yeah, well, well, maybe like a cup, it doesn't have to be a glass, yeah. it's just what, what came to mind. Just elevating, using suction to lift something like a, a, a drinking thing off the table. When I was, I'm going to say 14, maybe 13, 14 in that range, it was 2 a.m. And, you know, Voss Water, and they have like those giant mm-hmm. caps. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. Voss, but they, they have massive. Silver. Yeah, they have massive silver bottle caps. And I, I had one on my desk and it was 3 a.m. And I thought about being a kid and creating that seal and like sucking it up. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I'm going to suck up this bottle cap, and just lift it without my hands. The dumb 3 a.m. idea. I sucked it in, it slid from my upper lip down and locked onto my lower jaw. Like it looped <laughs> around my chin perfectly and it clamped. Once it, it was the exact, it's the most secured clamp I've ever experienced. And it, that's what it felt like when the, the, so the it kettle. Fell, it fell securely and, and attached to your chin. It attached to my chin and it hurt like a motherfucker. It was so bad. It was like just the worst pain. I struggled to remove it from my chin. I eventually did. It took like probably two minutes. I got it off. It's like, that was stupid. I'm never going to do that again. What a dumb thing. I went to bed. I wake up, go into my kitchen. My mom says, why do you have dirt on your face? I was like, what do you mean? I don't have dirt on my face. She's like, get over here. She tried to like clean the dirt. I gave myself two giant hickeys. That were like goatees. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> it sealed so tightly. The lid gave me hickeys down like my left and right side. It was truly like a hickey goatee. Well, how did you get multiples? Did it like well because suck it on clamped on down? both sides? Yeah, it clamped on both sides. Like it was a circular cap. It clamped on both sides, and I had equal goatee hickeys down the left and right side of my chin. It was so embarrassing. I didn't know how to lie about that injury. 
Like some, if somebody brought it up, I'd be like, I fell into a fence. Like I didn't know what to say. Like I, I didn't want to say that I gave myself hickeys by sucking on a bottle cap by accident. Like it's, it's a dumb thing. But as soon as that fucking kettle locked onto that bowl, that's immediately what I thought of was that bottle cap. Because I was like, I'm fucked. How do I You're do like, this? This bowl's gonna get a hickey. This bowl's gonna get two massive goatee hickeys. I cannot have this. This is a great bowl. So eventually, I decided this is what I'm gonna do. I need to tilt everything to its side. That's the only way to get this bowl out of here. But to do that, I need to obviously get it underneath uh, a pot. Why didn't you just drag the bar back towards the kettle? I couldn't. It would not let me. Like it's it the it. Do you see how like the the width of it yeah, went beyond lip. what the yes the lip of the bowl was further out than what the metal thing would let me pull. <laughs> I could not reverse the pull. It was latched on, and there's nothing. The only way I could get it out is if I lifted it and like pulled it up and over the kettle was the only thing. So I got a bowl. I'm like, I'm just going to pour everything into this pot, and we're, we're fine. And I'll just pour from the pot into another bowl. So the, I start, the other handle swings over, mates to that one too. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is I lift the kettle, and I start moving the bowl, and then this happens immediately. Oh, the bowl, the bowl instantly shat. That's how tight the clamp was. Like as soon as oh. I moved it a slight bit, the bowl shatters in half. My broth leaks out onto the counter, and I just watch sad as it goes over the side, oh. hits the floor, and is just done. So then I panic. I grab napkins. I clean it up, and that was my ramen. I was trying to make ramen. I broke the bowl. That that looks like a bowl that's been in your family for years. It's an old bowl. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's valuable or anything. It's just, it's a nice bowl. Did you get in trouble for breaking it? No. No, it's just oh, my bowl. Good. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you lost a bowl. Did you, no, let me ask you a question. Were you able to salvage any of that ramen or did you oh, I ate all over of it. again? I ate all the ramen, but it was brothless. It was a, it was a sad, it wasn't great. It was a bad ramen experience. Did you get any uh, fun ceramic chunks? It broke so cleanly. It, it's in three pieces. It was a clean well, that's break. That's good. Like, it's easy to fix. I'm going to try to glue it back together. Just haven't done it yet. If there's, if there's a part missing, it probably means someone's trying to kill you there. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, let me ask you a question. What did you, like, did you glean any insights from this experience? Is there anything that you've decided to take I'm away? Not gonna, and... I'm not going to cook ramen in a kettle going you, forward. You, you shouldn't do anything with that kettle. You should bin no. that thing. Just no, it's a great one. kettle. It's a what great kettle. What do you mean? Kettle. It's a it's fantastic ridiculous. kettle. Tell no, that to the bowl. It's a great, <laughs> the bowl is my fault. I put the bowl in that position. I put the angle where it was. Why not get a kettle with a spout that has just had a lid on it? Mm. It's like that scene in 127 hours when it locked, you know, where, where like the boulder is on the guy's hand. He's just like, this is my life. I can't, wow, that happened. That was the, that was the click. Once it clicked on as like, this is just, I can't reverse this. We got to deal with this somehow. I'll be surprised if that's ever happened to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the most absurd, chaotic. I almost <laughs> set the kitchen on fire that I broke a bowl using a kettle because the handle. You should sue the kettle company because this is how warnings get on ladders. You, the end result could be you could be a warning on all kettles going forward. That could be your legacy. I'm yeah. going to try and find a stove top kettle. I wish I knew the name of it. Try to find his kettle. Yeah. Oh my god! The one of the first things is it my kettle? Is a like a hook over lidded kettle? Oh, oh, I've never. I can't believe I've never seen. Maybe they're more common than I thought. But put a link in. I want to see. I think that actually might be the same kettle. Well, it's not Ooh. the same, but but that that has a complete model. spout. It's not like a, a half spout. No, that's a half spout. That's that's it. Looks like, like the hats. top comes off. Yeah. Yeah. The top oh, so the off. so the other half of the spout is on the lid. Yeah. The yeah. the other yeah. The lid completes the spout, as Nick said. I'm looking at it. I'm. I think it. It seems. It's weird. Uh, it seems like a functional tea kettle would not probably try to make anything other than tea in it. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Oh, that's like Based a little dangly tea. tea container. Yeah. yeah. Does yours have the dangly tea container in it? Uh, no, I don't think it does. I'm not, not seeing any warning to not cook ramen in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a two hundred dollar kettle. It's a fancy kettle. It's a nice kettle. Was yours similar? It is similar. I don't think it's that exact one, but it's it's a similar idea. Wow. Well, I I feel uh, I feel dumb then. I guess I've never just I've just never seen that style. Interesting kettle uh, flex there. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I got to flex where I can, Jeff. It's I got sushi enough. containers on the floor. I gotta have like I gotta have yeah. something. 
That ball flexed real nice. <laughs> <laughs> the ball completely shattered. <laughs> I, I love any story of pictures in your kitchen. They're always <laughs> yeah. so good. <laughs> Summer is here, and the living ain't easy if you've got Swamp Pass. How will you stay on top of your sweaty bottom? Why, try a refreshing spray from a Hello Tushy bidet. Keep your sweaty crack clean all summer long. They write this stuff, not me, with the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment. It is stylish, it is eco-friendly, and it's a refreshing little shower for your butthole. The Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. It cleans itself with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. This thing loves to clean. It cleans you, it cleans it. It's like, God, I wish it, I wish I could get it to clean my oven, honestly. I wonder if I installed a toilet facing, well, well, we'll, we'll look into that. No one wants to work up a sweat in 100 degree heat. And if you live like I do in Texas, it's 100 degrees uh, 300 days a year. That's why the Hello Tushy Bidet attaches to your existing toilet with no electricity or extra plumbing needed, and Hello Tushy cuts toilet paper use by 80%, so it'll pay for itself in a few months, and all of those ints will thank you. Plus, Hello Tushy's got your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. If you've already got a Hello Tushy, why not upgrade to the 3.0 model? Defeat Swamp Ass. Go to hellotushy.com face to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash face for 10% off. hellotushy.com slash face. We all take little risks every day when we go online, whether we think about it or not. We think our connection probably won't be interrupted by hackers. Our data probably won't be used against us. All of my, uh, I don't know, uh, collectible spoon and thimble browsing probably won't fall into the evil cabal of... Uh, uh, ceramic uh, militant anti-spoon and thimble uh, aficionados. But using the internet without ExpressVPN, why, that's like driving your car without insurance. Why take the risk? Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, all the places that you go, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, whether it's your passwords, your financial details, uh, all your save files and Angry Birds, I don't know. But it doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack somebody, just some cheap hardware. A smart 12-year-old could do it. A average intelligence 12-year-old could probably do it. And your data is valuable, whether you realize it or not. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person just selling personal info on the dark web. ExpressVPN acts as an online insurance for you. It creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so the hackers can't steal your personal data like your spoon shopping habits. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption and then into the, uh, in, into the, the, the nether reaches, the, the, the dark areas of your computer where you hide all of your, your, your thimble collections. Uh, ceramic or metal. And ExpressVPN is simple to use on all of your devices. Just fire up the app and click one button to get protected. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash face. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash face. And you can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash face. It was a time. What about you guys? How how are how's well, things? I think you should be looking for larger signs, larger meanings in these things that are happening, these minor inconveniences. For example, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how my day started out. Yeah, well, yesterday, uh, I, I need some tree work done, right? Um, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Need, need to have some, my, some canopies left out. I have a, a dead tree, in the, two, two trees that died from the great freeze that I had to have cut down. So I had, uh, had some fellows come out yesterday to do some tree work because I don't schedule things on Tuesdays and Thursdays because those are the days that I record Annual Pass and uh, this podcast currently. And uh, <laughs> so I try to avoid anything, any people in and around my house those days. I need not only quiet so that I can record because I'm recording at home, but I also, to be honest <laughs> with you, uh, it takes a little bit of preparation to get ready to record podcasts. And mm -hmm. so it, it's nice to have a little bit of uh, time to gather my thoughts, you know? Uh, so Wednesday was yesterday. Uh, I had some fellows come out to, to look at doing some tree work, and I thought they were going to do it then. They did not. They said, well, we'll give you a quote. It's going to be this much. Uh, we said, okay, cool. 
when will you do it? And they said, it'll be a couple days. We'll call, we'll, we'll call you uh, and get you on the schedule, right? And get you on the books. It's like, no mm-hmm. problem. This morning I got up, Emily went to work. I had uh, coffee with minor league fan Jack this morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I left my house at 8.45 or so to go see minor league Jack. Came home at 10 to uh, what appeared to be like 12 dudes in various trees around my house with chainsaws <laughs> just going fucking ham all over my yard, which is super appreciated. You know, I wanted to get the work done. Would mm-hmm. have appreciated a heads up. Probably would have told them not today because I need to record an audio podcast. There, there were, if there was, if there was, was one chainsaw, there were 20. There were, there, I saw at least four <laughs> chainsaws going. It was very loud. So, uh, I was like, I look at my watch. I'm like, well, shit. Uh, I got three hours. Maybe they'll be done. And then uh, I, you know, went about my life, proceeded to uh, get ready for the podcast as much as I can amongst all the noise. Super appreciate that they're doing the work, doing great work. As we get closer to the podcast, I have a, I have arrow in her crate because I have to leave the door open for her. Uh, otherwise, you know, if she encounters one ounce of resistance, she will just piss and shit immediately where she is yeah so i have to i have her in the crate she's napping uh and i'm getting ready for the podcast about 15 minutes before the podcast starts the last one we recorded i've given up on the idea that there won't be chainsaws i'm just hoping that y'all don't hear them (laughs) judged by the fact that uh i haven't heard from you guys complain i don't think that you did at any point which has been nice yeah you also didn't notice when i got up in the middle of a podcast and left to go tour the yard and give the guy a check but all that happened while we were recording as well in this Uh, one (laughs) Uh, the last episode, yeah, and uh, <laughs> why? Okay. Well, I had because the guy rang my doorbell and I had to go talk to him. <laughs> Maybe say that though. We could have just stopped. What yeah. were we talking I, about? I cover. Don't, don't worry about it. Say it'd be a fun game for the audience. See if you can go back in time and figure out when when I was paying a bill. Uh, anyway, so uh, about at about so we recorded one today at about twelve forty five. Uh, I realized we're still doing uh it and uh it actually wasn't it might have overlapped with the discord disconnect but it wasn't had nothing to do with it so i'm answering nick in the chat uh so it's 15 minutes to go we're about to record i'm trying to figure out how the fuck i'm gonna communicate with you two when i'm uh so disappointed in you both uh in the moment (laughs) and uh trying to collect my thoughts listening to the chainsaw realizing that that's that's just i'm just gonna have to deal with that there's no way the universe is going to let me off the hook on the chainsaw stuff. Uh, anyway, and then Arrow barks once. I hear her go, Burp. and I go, all right. Uh, she probably wants to get out and go to the bathroom. I can't really let the door open, though, because there's dudes outside with chainsaws, and it would scare Henry, and it might scare Arrow, you know? And so, but I get up to go check on her, and as I, uh, and by the way, this I'm already, you guys, I already have Discord open. I'm about to join the chat room. I see you guys in there, uh, and I and Arrow barks once. So I go into the into the laundry room, and she's standing in her crate, pissing all over it. And I go, wow, uh, that was the one bark notice I got. Great. So I open the crate up. Uh, and of course, the underside of her is covered in piss. And of course, all of her bedding is covered in piss. So I take her out and I give her a little quick bath in the, in the hallway there. Still can't, you know, still not going outside because of all the chainsaws and stuff. And, and so I get, I wet some towels down and I scrub her clean and I get her nice and clean. And I think, well, at least she's peed now. So uh, I don't have to worry about her having, you know, barking while I'm doing the podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I take her bedding and I take the, all the bedding out of her, of her crate and I start washing it. And then I scrub the bedding or I scrub the bottom of the crate uh, because there's a little bit of pee there and get it all cleaned up. And then I stand up and I look and I'm like, oh, I have like seven minutes I did it pretty fast. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I turn around to see a line of uh, dog shit across my house. <laughs> uh, uh, she didn't just have to pee. She had to shit. And, you know, Arrow doesn't like to shit all at once. She likes to make a, oh. a journey out of it. Uh, like a, Maybe it's bread comes so she can find her way back to the original turd. I don't know. But uh, so then I had to uh, clean a rug and clean up four <laughs> piles of dog shit. All then to race back in and sit down with one minute to go to start the podcast with you lovely people. And I got to thinking why I was telling you, Andrew, you should look for larger meanings in life. I realize that this is my fault because I, I got on my high horse and I, I said, I understand that my place in the universe is on a level that is par with shit. But that, that was where I, I misspoke. I, I misread the tea leaves. What the message was is I'm not on a level as, as shit. I am one level below shit. So I apologize to the universe 
for for attempting to say that I am of the level of feces. I recognize that I am I'm more like the universe's doormat. And I'm the thing that, like, you guys, when you go into your house and you don't want to bring shit into your home or into your lives, you'd like to leave the shit outside. So you wipe your shoes off, the mud and the shit. You wipe it off on a door. I am the universe's shitty doormat, uh, is, uh, is uh, what I've gleaned from, uh, well, 46 years, but certainly from today. And so I, was, I would say to you, Andrew, maybe, maybe look for, there might, the universe might be telling you something uh, in that kettle story. That's, hmm, I'll have to analyze what it is telling me. I do have, it's an unrelated update, but I, I feel like I need to offer you an official apology, Jeff. About what? The universe has spoken in a weird way. We made fun of your, your, your recipe. I don't want to go back to the whole condiment thing, but I just, uh, I, just, I just got this notification. A French fry company has responded to my family recipe, <laughs> which is your recipe, calling it absolutely delicious. <laughs> Your recipe is approved by a fry company. Mm. I feel like it officially is in the condiment thing. I can't argue against the verified fry that? can. I don't know, but it just happened. Universe works in weird ways. Jeff, I apologize. Yours is absolutely a condiment. Well, ap- ap- apology accepted. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and they do make tots. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't think the universe wants me to win any. So, um you know. I, I don't know. Or the potatoes, they side with you. That's a win. I'd say you got a win. You won a lot in Vegas. You've got some wins. I thought I would go a day without cleaning up shit, but I did not. <laughs> I did not. Do you have like a board in your house at this point of like days since I've had to clean shit? And you're just constantly never there would be no past point. one. There would be no. It would just be, yeah. a, it'd be extra work to erase it every day. Do they, do they make it like a special shit vac? No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you have to deal with shit in Vegas? Kind of. I was in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair point. Vegas is fucking man. I'm vaccinated and all, and and yeah. But man, Vegas is a is a throng of people. And well, you really tested out that obnoxious, <laughs> yeah, scary people. Man, Vegas scares the shit out of me. It just you always just see crazy stuff. Like I was just behind, I was behind someone I know w- watching them play roulette. Some guy walks up. Drops about five grand on a single number, <laughs> like the only bet. It immediately lands on that number, and he walks away with close to like 200 grand without even changing his facial expression. <laughs> and I just looked at the person I was with. I was like, what just happened? Like, what just, what just happened right in front of us? And was that normal for that guy? That, it was mental. What is the odds of that? It's like 30 something to one. He's probably like, uh, keep it together, keep it together. Yeah. You look, you look cool right now. Freak yeah. out in the hotel room. It's the coolest moment of my life. Because, because cause in my opinion, five grand is an obscene amount of money to place on a single bet. Like, that's a heavy loss. But to get 200, like, what is it? Like, 180 something back. That's life changing. Yeah. And yeah. it just, it, maybe yeah. it just wasn't to him. Maybe it was just like, no, I'll put it with the others because <laughs> he does it all the time. <laughs> I, yeah. We were just so confused as to like, did he know? Like, how could he know? Maybe, What's maybe going he on? was. Maybe he was so far in the hole. He's like, well, that's a start. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> maybe. I just still to this day, it like the whole experience. It was you know slightly amazing, but mostly terrifying. Uh, just how it played out in front of us, uh, as if like nothing happened. I, I just don't want to know anything more about that guy. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's like the fun of most of the fun of Vegas for me, especially now that I don't drink anymore, is just watching people. It's like the best people watching because mm-hmm. it's like it's people that are it's cutting loose or, or, you know, just going wild or are losing money and freaking out or <laughs> winning money and freaking out or winning money and being very calm and collected. Apparently, that's the first I've heard of that. Uh, it's just, it's it just, it's never dull, you know? It's a high risk scenario though in Vegas. Cause like, let's say a great people watching is like at a blackjack table, but then you have the pressure of, you don't want to be the person fucking up the table. It is. Oh <laughs> yeah. The For table sure. etiquette. I got called out. I was playing, <laughs> I was doing like an online casino thing where I was playing blackjack and I got called out there and I felt like a little kid in school. Like even the dealer was like, what are you doing? Stop <laughs> doing that. And I just like, I wanted to hide. You got called out online? I got called out online because somebody else... up online etiquette? 
Well, because I kept splitting tens because I was like, I feel lucky today. And you're not supposed to split tens. It's like a low probability unless you're in like a tournament is the only context where you'd want to do that. And uh, I guess it's bad table etiquette. Oh. So people, uh, people like I had two people at the table are like, that's the third time you split tens. Why are you doing that? Stop doing that. And then the dealer <laughs> was like, stop the game. I was telling me like the math probability of why I shouldn't split ten. The whole table is mad at me. And I was just in my living room and I felt so <laughs> embarrassed and like, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm playing. I didn't mean to fuck uh, up your thing. So you like on audio? Like, could you hear each other? Uh, no, I have no audio. Like you. The dealer has audio. Nobody else does. Okay. You could text chat if you want to. I never do. I guess I just don't know the I don't know the rules of blackjack, so I don't really understand. I, I is it is that the one where you can like yeah. wreck the entire game for everyone else by what well, you by what you're doing? I think there are like certain bad plays and good plays that it is standard. I'm not super knowledgeable about of, blackjack. I'm you're just trying to craps. get as close to 21 without going over. Is yeah, the you can't really fuck anybody else over with your bad decisions in blackjack. Yeah, that's what is is craps the one where it's like your moves affect everyone else's. I mean, if you roll shitty, hmm. I think you can in black because I think it's dependent on like what card the dealer has. So like you can make bad hits or, or like stays depending on what I you just did. don't understand why. If, if it doesn't affect other people at the table, why are they annoyed? Well, at you because because I'm taking cards from the shoot that could potentially harm the dealer. And I'm already uh, in an advantageous position. Like, I'm probably going to win anyway. So I might just be <laughs> fucking up for everybody else. And I also am already ruining, like, a near-perfect hand to, like, out of greed, essentially. So they were upset. <laughs> but I, I stopped playing for, like, eight months after that because I was so embarrassed. And, like, it was just, it was like, I don't want the dealer to yell at me. I was just <laughs> having some fun. Have you done real Vegas in front of real people? I've never done real Vegas in front of real people. When you do, can, can I be there? Yeah, you and I will be. <laughs> we're going to be like swingers at like the budget table. Just people watching. I think you could be that guy. You could be the guy who walks up to his first table, drops five grand and walks away with hundreds of thousands. I would not be able to contain myself. I could not be the calm. I would blow the moment. I would immediately <laughs> become extremely uncool in everybody's eyes. It would be very apparent that I was <laughs> stunned. I'd not be like, this is nothing guy. That couldn't be me. Another weird Vegas experience I had, I got into a, I was with Dan, we got in a lift and some other woman got into a lift too. And her, her purse was like overflowing with chips and she was like spilling them all over the floor, like on the way to the lift. And like she, the door closed and she'd lost some and they were like all over the floor of the lift. <laughs> and we helped her pick them up and they were all like thousand dollar chips. And I was just like, I had like, I had like 10 grand of hers in my hand. I was like, oh my God, you've. She must have had like 80 grand's worth or something. But I was just like, man, you're, you're rich off, the, off this one Vegas trip. Did you encounter the person who robbed the $200,000 guy? Is this like <laughs> second part of the story? Like you have, you have seen two ends of this thing without realizing it? Just the way she was treating them though was really <laughs> mind blowing. They looked like they were tens or something, but she was just spilling thousands all over the floor. I was like, you left, you left probably two or three grand outside the lift downstairs. <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, I hope I don't." She was really drunk. She's like, "Yeah, I hope I don't lose any more." I was like, "Oh, oh my god!" <laughs> I, was, I was tempted to like go back oh. down after her. What's the fucking the name of the bear in Spyro that has like the sack of gems? Like that's just what I'm imagining of this woman with like a sack of poker chips just leaking out the bottom, being yeah. careless. Yeah, we made sure like <laughs> we made sure she got to where she was going without dropping anyone because she, she was all over the place. And I, I think by the time. I don't think either of us went back down to see if there are any left on the floor, but I assume someone found them. <laughs> Gavin told me that he has great roulette luck one time. I'm 100% on roulette. Nah, you're not. 100%. Are you one for one? Or are you like 10 for 10? What's, what is 100% for you? I'm disputing this. Yeah, what is uh, your 100%? You made it, I, in my head, it, you were like four for four is what it's yeah. like roughly. Yeah, that's 100%. Sort of that because Bernie, Bernie, uh, you know, guy we started or started Rooster Teeth with, he likes to brag that he has a perfect field goal kicking record because he's one for one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that counts. So like, Gavin might have to be a hundred percent roulette because he's done, played roulette once and won. Yeah, I did. Um, I just I went on colors because I don't understand. I I'm just I don't understand any gambling really. I, it's like the simplest stuff. So I just like put a put a hundred on black, got two hundred. Put two hundred on black, got four hundred. Put four hundred on red, and I think I did it four times, and I won four times. And I just thought, I'm up on Vegas forever now. If I just walk away, yeah. The way the way gambling mm -hmm. works for people that don't gamble a lot is essentially you go up to a complete stranger 
in front of other people and you give them an amount of your money, like a hundred bucks, let's say, and then you say, do something complicated in front of me and then keep that money. And then they do. <laughs> and that's yeah. typically that's typically how it works. <laughs> it, it is. And then you yes. go, thank you. Thank you. I don't ex- exactly understand why I don't have my hundred dollars anymore, but uh, people around me seem to be having fun. So I guess I am too. Dan was like annoyed by my luck. So he he then went in. I think on, on a couple of them, he was betting against me. Uh, and he lost twice, and then he was, and, I, and then it, we were like, "Well, you know, if you if you put that money in again and you win, uh, it'd be like uh, nothing ever happened." And he kept doing oh, it. It yeah. landed on green twice, back to back. <laughs> he was livid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a great way to lose, though. Like that's almost yeah. as good as winning. That's better than it just being the other color. I want to uh, lose gloriously if I'm going to lose. I just hate on roulette on, on a lot of the the tables there's a screen that shows all the previous results yeah as if that has anything to do with what's going to happen next it all Uh, that is there to do is poison (laughs) your mind yes well you don't you don't understand the mind you are not a gambling man gavin it is if there is four blacks in a row it is universally impossible to be black again it cannot happen (laughs) that's how how gambling brain works you put everything in on red on that play and i don't know how rigged the tables are like i assume they're they must be in a way. Uh, I don't. I would. Assume I don't think so. Not. I don't I think they're rigged at all. I just think the games are so tilted for the yeah. rule set. That the game. The rig game it. is rigged. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In, in itself. itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you could theoretically count cards to like increase your probability of winning or like making smart bets in blackjack, and it's just illegal. Like you just can't do it. They won't tolerate it. Yeah. How do they prove you're doing it? Uh, because your betting amount, so like typically if you're you want to see a majority of the cards right, so you're gonna be making small bets, and then once the shoe becomes more beneficial to you, like there's a lot of face cards in it or tens, then you start making higher bets because you have a higher probability of winning off of those hands. That just seems like a part of the game to me. I just don't understand. It how. is. That that's but that's why I'm saying they don't need to rig the games because the rules are rigged within themselves. Right. Like it's I wouldn't be surprised if you were a multi-millionaire, Andrew, just off gambling. Oh, and no. you just never told us. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I know about your perfect roulette record is I went like a historic 0 for 28 in roulette place where I just couldn't <laughs> win. Like it, it mathematically impossible, like the five blacks in a row. I couldn't win. And I kept doing bl- black. I was like, you was doing the color thing. Doing the, the Wesley Snipes always bet on black thing. I'd bet on black, always red, always red, no matter what I did. Even in Animal Crossing, there's a roulette game you could play. That was red. <laughs> I just kept g- losing on red. So I talked to you about roulette randomly, and you're like, yeah, I'm undefeated in roulette. Every time I go to Vegas, I'm, I've win. I'm like five for five. Unstoppable. You, we went 0 for 4, the two of us. I'd ask you what color to put down, and then oh, you're yeah. just like, oh, I guess it just doesn't translate over. I guess I need to be there. No, I think we need to be doing it in person. Okay. And, and I would be willing to come out of retirement on a real-life roulette table <laughs> with you, and you just bet with me, and I think we'll be in it. We'll, either you'll destroy everything I've worked towards, or we'll just continue as normal, and you'll be, you'll be up on it. That'd be great. Uh, we're gonna I lose. just hope you don't bring me down. Oh, I'm going to bring you down. Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a glorious <laughs> if you guys, If you guys win big in Vegas, you need to immediately go and buy the two nicest ceramic tea kettles <laughs> to celebrate. I like this plan. Oh. Like the, like if, 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 I don't know, if like Celine or Hermes or Givenchy makes a tea kettle, uh-huh. And, it's in, and if it's like encrusted in like diamonds and, and gold, <laughs> you, should, you need to buy it. <laughs> I did that with, um, I didn't buy a kettle. This is just gambling <laughs> stuff. Um, my guardian for RTX, Charles, who I now mm-hmm. work with. One of my favorite people. We went to Vegas for something. And um, I was trying to convince him to gamble. He was like, no, you know, I'm never going to do that. It's not me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and I just sat down at a slot machine. I don't have anything special with slots. Like I just, I just mm-hmm. lose money in those. And uh, I just play like kind of low amounts. He sat down next to me at a slot machine. And, uh, you know, they come around, they offer you free drinks and stuff if you're actually mm-hmm. gambling. But he wasn't doing anything at his machine. I was like, look, you're going to sit here. Let's just, just, just put in a dollar. Just see what happens. <laughs> and he was like, oh, <laughs> fine. Like caving to the peer pressure. He won $650 off a <laughs> single <laughs> first spin. <laughs> yeah. And he, I don't think he ever spun again. I think he just cashed <laughs> out and that was it. And I was like, Man, I've got, I must be providing a little bit of luck. So I, 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 w- I would love to test that out with you, Andrew, at, in Vegas at some point. 
I think my bad luck counters your good luck, and it's not even close. As lucky <laughs> as you are, and it's not even a statement on how lucky you. I'm sure you're incredibly lucky. I, I don't think I think I, I overpower in the bad. Yeah, luck I got to agree with that. I think those and those opposing forces, Andrews, uh, I don't know <laughs> if it's luck or karma or whatever, but I feel like karma. it's a lot stronger. Yeah, I, I don't I, honestly I don't think my I don't think Charles winning was my luck transferring. It was just he's very lucky because uh, when I watch Dan I <laughs> play roulette, he loses. Every time. <laughs> yeah, but come on, it's Dan. <laughs> the universe has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's like sub dog shit level as well god damn dude dan and i are on the same level he just doesn't know it probably <laughs> he's, he's also a universe's shit doormat oh this is this is a good i'm having this is a fun episode do you think jeff we should start recording in person uh well how are we gonna record with andrew well i mean you and i could be in person i mean yeah that would be fun but i feel like we'd it'd be an it'd be an like it wouldn't be balanced for Andrew. I feel like we're all in the same, we're all in the same playing field when we're when we're alone. But I feel like the dynamic would be weird if you and I were in person, but Andrew wasn't. You might be right. I'm just really excited to do stuff in person. I don't know. I, I'm not. A, I'm not opposed to it. You know, it's like that's how we do the break shit stuff. But how do how would you feel about it, Andrew? I think it would be a little weird because the timing is just different. For yeah. you guys, like it's more immediate, like conversationally. I think we're kind of all equally in a delayed window. Which makes this work. I mean, I'm not not opposed to try. I think it. we would have to do it with headphones because uh, on the break shit, it's kind of hard to hear through the little speaker. I also don't know that you guys would have benefited by m- me being in person in front of you last episode, for instance. Like you know, <laughs> well, you weren't. You were you're paying a bill. <laughs> well, because you would have been in your <laughs> you're backyard. Literally not there. Yeah. <laughs> so you uh, you know. But I'm gonna. This is like we've recorded a bunch because people are going on like summer breaks. I'm gonna. We're we're taking like a little. It's not going to stop for the people. We've got like six. This episode will come out on August 4th. That's are you how far serious? Ahead we are. This is an August 4th episode. You know what I feel worst about in that whole deal is that the amount of time since we decided to record the, be- the bike trick is <laughs> it's, it's been a bit of time. Yeah. Like maybe a week, but it's been like six episodes. <laughs> yeah, we should do that this week. We should do it this week, but it's not going to come out till October at this point. I feel well, as long bad. as we've got it in the bag. Yeah, yeah, as long as we got it in the bag. I mean, it's it, to be fair to us too. Every time we've tried, there's been rain, and when you're dealing with when you're dealing with badass bike tricks in a drainage ditch, <laughs> the ditch has got to be drained. That's all there that is, is to true. it. <laughs> that is a great point. Yeah. yeah, I do see on the on the old weather map though. There's still, there's some sun peeking behind a cloud coming up. Really. Next week. Uh, yeah. I uh well I'm I'm out of town next week uh or oh. I'm not around next week but I am around <laughs> today uh tomorrow and and throughout the weekend so um we could try tomorrow the yeah, the, maybe before the icon is a cloud with lightning with a ninety percent chance of rain. <laughs> 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 that'd be great the it's weird does not want me to pull off this badass bike trick you know what though even if it's raining it would add an element in the slow mo. That's true. It, it would. It would look cooler. You'd look like a very rad dude, Jeff. Why don't we just do it tomorrow, no matter what? Well, what is tomorrow? Thir- Wednesday or Thursday, Friday? Tomorrow's Friday? Yeah. Well, it's, it's not. It's the. Isn't he worried about the landing? That's the issue with the rain, right? Is that it? Well, I, I mean, I'd have to go through. Listen, if <laughs> it's not a boat, it's a bicycle. <laughs> So I, th- the bike's not going to go through the raging river that is the drainage ditch <laughs> if it's too wet. Uh, yeah, man, I am a busy. I have a thing from ten to eleven, but other than that, I'm free. So right after that, I can I'll hop maybe, on my bike and head out. Maybe a little noon bike trip. A little noon bike trip. That's I'll get the Phantom ready. All right. I think I think that's all we need. Just a lovely slow mo. We don't need any like no. behind the scenes or anything. No, 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 yeah. no, not at all. It'll be uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We'll just have to make sure that it's you know. I'll I'll. Uh, <laughs> well, I was gonna say I'll do it after this, but I gotta go into art, uh, into work to do first night. So I'll uh, I'll check tomorrow to make sure <laughs> if the coast is clear before you roll out your phantom. This has we'll turned into like a shuttle launch. You're just doing a bike trick. I don't know why. Like we need ideal like perfect weather weather conditions. <laughs> Once again, do you want to be mission control? Yeah, I can't I'd love do to. the trick if it's submerged. Sure, that's totally fair. <laughs> just in my head, it doesn't like I in my head. It's a puddle, Jeff, at the bottom of like a, a pool, like a ramp. Okay. It's not a it's not a, a waterfall, but okay. I'm sure it's I'm sure it is. OK, that's just fine. in my head. That's the visual. I'm excited about it. I'm excited so, about it. Well, that's all that matters to me. As long as you're excited about it. This is great. It's nice to be excited about stuff. It yeah. is. 
You know what's weird? When this comes out, my birthday's tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do. Your Strange birthday's this- tomorrow? Well, when this comes out. That's how far ahead we are. Your birthday's hey, the 5th of August? My birthday's the 5th of August. Hey, let me be the first person to wish you a happy 27th wow. birthday. And Is Look it 27? That. It's 27. You got it right. If you wouldn't have second-guessed it, I would have been impressed. I, uh, I'm just making sure I said it right. Uh, and I wished you a happy 27th birthday before anybody else did, I think. Thank you. Yeah. No, you're, you're definitely the first. I have a gift for you guys as, as a thing to celebrate. To celebrate this A bigger exciting- gift than that kettle bowl <laughs> a, a bigger we'll see we'll see how this gift goes this is as well established this is a redemption year for me <laughs> last year a lot of things didn't necessarily go the way i'd planned there were some pretty big obvious ones the main one i'd say is the fire extinguisher the fire extinguisher bit did not go as planned <laughs> so i have a new fire extinguisher no way i have a new fire extinguisher i have it bagged up just like last time <laughs> He really is going all in on this redemption. Are you year. serious? I'm going all in on the redemption tour. I got it in my hands right now. I love that you did that whole mess of whatever last episode was next to a new fire extinguisher. Yeah, it was behind me. So like when we were talking about, do we even want to do a second episode? It's like, yeah, we want to do a second episode. I got a fucking fire extinguisher in <laughs> a bag ready to go. We're doing a second episode. Oh, I, I can hear the bag. The bag. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm trying to find the handle through the bag. Where it, uh, <laughs> Are you going to be videoing any of this? I, I, you do, like, I need both hands on the bag to hold, to even hold this. So let's. I mean, you can just prop a camera up, prop a phone. I, I don't, you don't, you don't, much like the kettle, Gavin. You do not know my reality right now. I need, to, <laughs> I need to even just find. Where is the. Okay, so that's the nozzle. So where is the top of Is this, this? a brand oh new fresh God. fire extinguisher? This is a brand new fresh fire extinguisher. I think Never I before it. been fired. Never before been fired. It's fully charged. What's We're that pressure s- gauge reading? Oh, it was, it was in the green. It was solidly oh. in the green. That's where, we, that's where we want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we did it. Fuck you, minor league Jack. That one went off. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday to me. That was an extended spray. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I mean, it was a disappointment last time. I wanted to make sure I got it. There you go. A fucking fire extinguisher for you. Happy August. Was it all contained? Oh, yeah. It's all contained. I don't know. Like, I, was, I thought it was going to fire like a rocket was my concern. So it's in like 15 garbage bags. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't rupture any of them. I, it may have. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I could start opening it. I mean, it's going to take a while. It's like a Russian doll scenario. Got to go bag to bag. <laughs> I love the way you do stuff. You just start doing it. There's no build up. There's yeah. no countdown. You're no. just like, yeah, so I got a new fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not going to, I, I open one of these bags and I already, I feel like it's in the air. I feel like my eyes are starting to burn a little bit. So we're going to just put <laughs> it back in that bag and we'll, we'll deal with that problem later. But there we go. I feel wow. fire extinguisher redeemed. I hope you will document this in, in photo form for us uh, to put on the Instagram at some point. I will, I will take a photo of the bags and the, and the unopening of it when I get there. I'll take a photo of the kettle as well. I have some work you know, to do. Maybe with all this redemption happening, there'll be roulette redemption. <sighs> maybe this is it. All of this stuff Ooh. will turn your luck around. That could be it. I bet if I picked a color for you now, it would win. Yeah? Do you want to do that right now? Yeah. Okay, give me a second. I'll, I'll, I'll log into my account. <laughs> Nick can edit this so it won't be an awkward long pause. Although, because I said that, now he probably won't. And it'll just be extended. <laughs> Nick, I'm glad you're back. I miss Nick. It's great having Nick back. (sighs) Do you have a gut instinct, Gavin, as far as what are you feeling right now? What is your process? Or is it just like in the moment you'll say, you'll know? Uh, I know what I'm going to say, and I feel like I'll just say it to you in the moment. Okay. How much are you you thinking about putting? (sighs) How much do you think I should? Uh, Well, I'm going to feel pretty responsible if you lose. So $1. $50? $50? That's a lot. Well, I can't remember what we were doing last time. 
my bets with Jeff on the NBA were 10 cent bets. And you want me to come out roulette? I'll, I'm willing to do 50 because of uh, the energy of the 5,000 guy. What, what, but last time you did roulette and I made you lose, what, what did you lose? I think 20. Oh, 20? I think so. Yeah, definitely not 50. 50 is a, that's a lot of ramen. That's a lot of ramen. <laughs> you should bet enough that if you win, you can replace the bowl you broke. <laughs> okay, I got to figure out inflation. It's an old bowl. Uh, I haven't seen a bowl like that since the 80s. <laughs> I think it's that old. Um, what am I putting in? What is the bet amount? What are we doing? Is it 50? Is 50 the, the roulette bet? What about a nice 25 so that you win? Okay, 25. 25 and you we'll have do 25. 50. We'll do 20. I sometimes do this anyway. I call this a free lunch bet. If I win, I get a free lunch. I'll buy myself lunch. Don't have to think about it. If I lose, I'm not going to have a free lunch. Make something. Okay, we're authorizing. Deposit successful. Okay, we're going to the live casino. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> we're going to. Hey, try not to piss everybody off. <laughs> okay. Should I share my screen? Can I oh, do yeah. that? Totally. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, yeah. so here we go. So wh what are we doing? Where are we going? Black. What's the bet, Gavin? Black? Yep. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to put it there. <laughs> Undo. Okay, there we go. Uh, I was gonna say red. Interesting. I was hoping that Gavin and I would be on the same page. We are definitely not. Click zoom in. Okay, here we go. What, I bet on black? <laughs> we bet on black? Okay, it's spinning. I fucking oh! hate you. <laughs> You're the worst. Ooh. Ooh. It was red. It doesn't oh. translate at all. I think I need to be betting too. I think that's how we'll do it. <laughs> so now you have a system? <laughs> we couldn't have the system before? I don't know why we just did that. We already knew it wouldn't work. I said I black. I never went on black. <laughs> I, I maybe thought all the redemption would, would have... Turned your luck. It's no. So bad. No. <laughs> Let's end the oh. podcast. Happy birthday to me. Down 25 <laughs> to start the day. <laughs> I just made you lose $25 again. Yep. Sure did. Oh. On the, uh, hey, on the bright side, you're one birthday wish richer. You can always spend that. <laughs> end the show. I'm going to get you a gift. I'm going to make up for that. I'm going to send you something. You're going to send me $25 worth of fucking Branston pickles, you son of a bitch? What are you going to do? Wait, wait, wait. You mean Branston pickle the condiment? The condiment, yeah. Everyone's favorite condiment. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Thanks for listening to Face. <laughs> uh.